it generally runs out of grip before it runs out of power. Yeah. Nine, time, <laughs> nine times out of ten, it's not often it's running out of power. Right, it's always got the power. Yes, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, but of all the things about the tractor, the engine is probably the most impressive bit about it. Just, it just always looks and works hard. It's, uh, it's by far the best bit about it. Gentlemen, hello and welcome along to another customer review from LandPowerTV.com. This time it is all about the uh, the versatile Delta Track for track tractor. So today you join us in sunny Lincolnshire and we are out with uh, AR Cravens and we're going to get their opinion on how they've been getting on with these Delta Track tractors and. To share his thoughts on the machine, we've got regular operator, Mr. James Norcott. So, James, before we dive into this tractor and so what you think of it, just uh, give us a bit of background about uh, the business and what you guys get up to. Uh, about three, three and a half thousand acres uh, of arables, uh, mostly cereals and sugar beet. Uh, and then we have around 160,000 chickens for laying eggs. We're growing around 750 eggs of sugar beet, and then the rest is all cereals, wheat, barley, oilseed rape. Doing about 600 acres of oilseed rape, uh, and then the spring barley is all after sugar beets. Uh, there'll be sort of 500, four or 500 acres of sort of spring barley, 300 acres of winter barley. So today we are well, just describe to us what we're uh, what you're on with today. Uh, it's a fair old outfit that you've got going on here. Yeah, so drilling rate, got a great tool bar, um, running about sort of 10 inches deep. And then we've got a Vardistan Tempo uh, drilling oilseed rate, uh, also put in DAP fertilizer there, right. and slug pellet. It's all in one pass. All in the one pass. So, yeah. whereabouts is like the fertilizer place? Is that sort of underneath it, next to it? Uh, just to the side of it. Just to the side of it, yeah. Right. So, you could say we're sort of you class this as kind of strip till kind of yeah, precision would, planting yes yeah. yeah definitely yeah we we use this drill for sugar beet but it was a bit of a a few other farms that we've seen run a similar concept or the same so we started doing it last year and yeah we like how it how it performs um, quite cost effective as well so yeah yeah no we like it that's it especially with the the one pass element of it so yes. straight into this stubble and yeah Away you go. And the, I presume those the legs on that Grange toolbar they're running directly in line either with the yes. the disc cultures on yeah, there. Yeah, five hundred mil spacing. Right. Is that a good spacing for the for your bit or is it? Yeah, we we're, we're finding the plants have a bit more room to grow. Um, it's still still in the early stages. We used to have a weaving drill before that was a direct drill, uh, but this is a bit bit different concept. Uh, yeah trying to give the plants a bit more room to grow and fill out a bit better. Yeah. Uh, but so far, the stuff that we've drilled, the very early stuff's coming up, so, and it looks well so far. So. Right. And how come you sort of ended up kind of going down this route with, uh, you know, establishing oil seed rate? I think cost-effectiveness, cost and we're finding that it's keeping flea beetles to a minimum. Yeah. Uh, and we're trying to drill it fairly early to get it established and growing, um, especially this year, just trying to get get it in moist ground, um, just to try and get it going. Uh, we're getting a bit dry, well, we have been getting a bit dry, but yeah. it's getting there slowly. Just get it in, up and away. Yeah. That's it. 
Does it take much pulling this this outfit? It yes. sounds like it's taking yeah, a bit it, of it does horsepower. Do, yeah. Yeah, it's only six meters, but it, yeah, it knows yeah. it's got hold of it. Yeah. Well, there's a lot going on, really, I suppose, isn't there? You've got that yeah. tow bar for the start, and you're pulling the drill through the ground as well. Yeah, there's 12, 12 legs on the grade. So there's 12 it's, legs on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's quite a few legs in the ground, isn't it? Yeah, it's pulling a lot of metal through. Yeah. You see about 10 inches deep there? Yeah, about 10 inches, yeah. thereabouts. So, right, we better get onto these tracks, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, see what you think of this tractor. So, You've been driving these Delta tracks for a while now, have you? Uh, nearly five years. This right. Time. So you've got a you've got a few hours under your belt then. Yeah, about four thousand thereabouts, something like that. Right, just under your belt. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so just tell us your your track tractor history, because I believe you've, you've not always had the versatile Delta tracks. What have you had sort of before this? Uh, well, as a business, they had a. 485 uh, Steiger on track, one of the earlier ones. Yeah. Uh, that was before my time. Um, and they run that for a number of years. I couldn't, I couldn't really say even how long, uh, but they had that fair while. Right. Um, and then, uh, yeah, they bought this in 2018, early 2018, I think it was. Yeah. And what was it that uh, sort of convinced them to go over to the, the versatiles? Cost, I think, was a big thing. Um, I think the, the price at the time, it, they were good value for money over what was available over like the sort of quad tracks and 9RX yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. Um, and they, they, de they actually demoed this tractor um, and after the demo uh, they ended up buying this one. So. Right. Oh, they were fairly yeah. convinced then? Yeah, they were convinced about it when they bought it. So. Right. Um, yeah, no, it, it pulls well. It's, yeah, powerful engine. Yeah, yeah. got that coming to power plant up yes. there. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty you strong. can hear it, hear it even in the cab. You can just hear that really nice power yeah. whistle. And uh, how many uh, Delta tracks have you had? Is this the first? This, this is the this first is one. This is the first and only yeah. one. This. Did you yeah. say it was about 2017 ish? Uh, 2018. 2018 when they got it, right? Oh, actually, yeah. they've been running this quite a while. Then. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, you, you reckon you've had five years on it then? Uh, near, probably not quite, but very, you'd be getting close to. Yeah. So overall, then, how have you got on with it? Yeah. Well, you know, general bits and pieces. Um, but overall, as a as a whole, yeah, no, fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it does it does everything we need to do. We do sort of varies on the year, but eight hundred to a thousand hours a year, depending on the year. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's doing plenty of work from July on till end of February, March sort of time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's generally, uh, like say, you're bringing out more your summer autumn time yes. jobs, is it? Yeah, you don't do any sort of spring work with it. No, uh, we park it up in the spring just um, predominantly because we do a lot. It's all on ploughing uh, in the spring just because of the weight. We want to try and keep the weight off the yeah. ploughing. So, yeah, it's all sort of primary tillage it's all doing. Right. And what tractors do you use for other work? Trail work, drilling? And uh, we've got two challenges, uh, one of which is across there somewhere. Ah, it's not that old there, yeah. Um, so yeah, two challenges this. Uh, we've got two John Deere 6Rs and yeah. uh, Case Puma uh, 240. Right. So a bit of a, bit of a mix of the fleet. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Well, it keeps dealers on the tolls, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And what's this like compared to the challenges? Obviously, it's a different kettle of fish because it's four tracks versus two tracks, but... Uh, yeah, pulling wise, yeah, you'll not be four tracks. The um, the challenges in the in the right conditions, challenges are really good in the right conditions. But yeah. as soon as it comes wet, they really struggle because you know the minute you turn, you break your tracks, then you lose all your traction. Yeah. So, yeah, these that you know they'll pull in any weather. You know, straight and true. Yeah. Four yeah. tracks is it? Yeah, whether it's you know wet or dry, it'll it'll always do it. So, yeah. Yeah. No. It, it's uh, yeah fast. So as well as you know, like we see you doing this job today, what else would you, what else would you do with it? Uh, we pull a, a carrier, Vardstad carrier behind the grain uh, for doing summer cultivations. Um, so we've got a six point two five metre carrier uh, just for doing all the sort of rape stubbles and wheat stubbles and so on for the summer. Yeah. Uh, and then we pull a knife for a lengthy plough. All right. 
and apart from sort of like planting today, do you do any drilling with it as well? No, uh, this is the only drilling it does. Um, we do all the rest of the drilling with a challenge, yeah. Yeah, for this sort of job, like, so it takes a fair bit of pulling. So. It does, it's, uh, it is making it work today. But well, she's loving it though, you can hear it. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of that, how has, how has performance been with this? So obviously we've got the, the Cummings power plant up front. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it pulls very well. It's, um, it generally runs out of grip before it runs out of power. Yeah. Nine, <laughs> nine times out of ten, it's not often it's running out of power. Right, it's always got the power. Yes, yeah, yeah definitely. 